doing deep ocean research is not unlike exploring the moon. Very little is known about either place, and they're both extremely hard to get to. It takes a huge amount of effort, advanced technology, and courage to try and answer questions about these remote locations. Andrew Fisher is the chief scientist for our expedition. One of the sort of um, big uh, ideas that we're exploring on this expedition is this circulation pattern, this plumbing that exists beneath the seafloor. Um, a lot of people don't realize is that there's a whole hydrologic world underneath the seafloor. There are cracks and crevices in the rock and water is moving in and out of the ocean crust, through the ocean crust. It's moving so fast that the whole ocean is getting recirculated in and out of the seafloor. It's happened thousands of times over Earth history that essentially the whole volume of the ocean is moving in and out of the Earth. And that whole process, how it works and what the effects are, um, we barely understand it. He's leading a group of scientists also studying the extremely remote environment of the subsea floor. Microbiologists on board want to learn about life forms that live in the dark below the ocean floor. And geochemists want to discover what's in the fluids that vent into the ocean from the rocks below. But the challenges of making observations in such an environment are daunting. One of the big challenges of ocean research in general is getting there. This expedition to the eastern flank of the Juan de Fuca Ridge is out on the research ship Thomas G. Thompson. The Thompson is 274 feet long and provides workspace and housing for about 60 people. Once we arrive above our study site, the difficult work begins, getting the tools to the bottom of the sea. We're collecting data from subsea floor observatories called corks. It's far too deep for scuba divers. This is where our most technical tool comes into play. Fisher and his colleagues have been installing corks into holes bored into the seafloor and running experiments over the past several years. On this expedition, we have Jason. Jason is an ROV, a remotely operated vehicle loaded with cameras, lights, and manipulator arms. Jason is both our eyes and our muscle on the seafloor. If the scientists and crew can overcome the difficulties of working 2,700 meters below the sea from a rolling ship, then the science observations can begin. The microbiologists will collect water samples and retrieve rocks left behind last year to see if and what kinds of microbes decided to colonize there. The geochemists will retrieve data and reset the devices that collected small fluid samples over a year. And Fisher will recover and relocate his measuring device called a flow meter. The flow meter sits on top of an open valve and records the fluid flow from the corked hole. Gauges in the cork and in others nearby record changes in fluid pressure from the long-term flow of water from the ocean crust into the ocean. This will allow Fisher and his colleagues to figure out the properties of the rocks far below the seafloor and how the water moves through them. There's this realm, there's essentially this whole underground world that is, we're just beginning to get a sense of its extent, how, 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 how much of it is there, how deep it goes, how fast the fluids move. And there are so many questions that go, they go right back to questions of the origin of life on Earth they go back to when, when, when humans get to some other planetary bodies in our solar system where the conditions are correct and they find ex, extraterrestrial life. I mean, some of the, the moons of Jupiter and, and some other planetary bodies are good candidates for this. Those are mixtures of rock, water, and heat. And that's exactly what we're looking at below the seafloor. It's kind of an analog for what might be found on other planets. The ocean crust is a vast, unexplored area of Earth. What's down there? How do systems work? Only now, with advanced technology like Jason, are we beginning to discover. 